In this video, I'm going to talk about the one thing that we can do in our training to improve performance, both physically and mentally. I'm going to talk about the tests that we need to do to find out our baseline and the activities and different types of drill that we can use in our training to help improve this performance. Hi guys, my name is Lee Eldridge, human performance coach from the Athlete Tribe. I hope you're doing well and I hope that your training and performance is improving. If you're new to the channel, obviously it'd be great to have you back, so please subscribe, click the like button and the notification. So what's this one thing? Well, this one thing is breath work. And why do we need to do that? Well, breath works improves CO2 tolerance. And CO2 tolerance has been around for ages, but it's only really come to light in the last five or so years, and mostly due to the work of Wim Hof and the guys at Shift Adapt. When I first started out in sports science, the biggest emphasis to improve physical performance mostly was about improving the amount of oxygen that we can consume and use in the body and that's known as your VO2 max. But in the last five years or so, CO2 tolerance has come to the forefront. And why is this important? Well, we know that CO2 is a byproduct of biological processes. And the way that we get rid of CO2 is by breathing, or what we call blowing off CO2. And we're always gonna have some amount of CO2 left in our system and we're always going to have some oxygen left in the system, obviously. But what we're now starting to realise is very similar to lactic acid that was a byproduct and it was nasty and you know it was all about how much we could tolerate, etc, etc. CO2 now is seen as a very useful tool for improving performance. CO2 is not necessarily harmful, it's the amount of CO2 that's the problem. Our bodies are very sensitive to the amount of carbon dioxide in our systems. And this is the main driver of, of why we breathe. Now, the problem is that if we don't have great tolerance or are very sensitive to CO2, this can cause us to over breathe. So by developing this CO2 tolerance, it can enable us to breathe better and have a better efficiency in our breathing while exercising or during our life. Why is it important to improve this tolerance? As I've mentioned before, there are lots of physiological benefits. But for me, one of the biggest benefits is that of mental performance. In a number of my videos, I've talked about the importance of a state. So we know that if you can control your state, you're more likely to improve and have peak performance. So breathing, or CO2 tolerance work is a way to be able to control that state. Now there are three main reasons from a physiological point of view of why CO2 tolerance will help. Firstly, CO2 dilates the blood vessels, meaning that blood finds itself easier to move around the body. The second is we talk about the Bohr effect. Now, as we breathe, okay, we take air in, the oxygen binds to haemoglobin, which transfers it around the body, and then is released or disassociates itself from the haemoglobin and goes into the working muscle. Now, if we have a greater amount of CO2 in the muscles, that disassociation, that splitting happens much easier. And what we find is that oxygen moves easier from haemoglobin into the working muscles. Third point is that this is happening so fast. Oxygen's coming in, it's being transferred around the body, it's being turned into carbon dioxide, it's then being blown off, and it's happening so fast. If we can increase the tolerance of, to CO2, this slows it down slightly and allows more oxygen to move into those working muscles. One of the main questions I get asked is, how do I start doing CO2 tolerance training? And the easiest way to start with any type of training is to test, because then we have a baseline that we can prescribe training from and see improvements in performance. The test that I'm going to show you today is something called a CO2 tolerance test. 
and it was created by the guys at Shift Adapt. And I put links into the descriptions of all their work that they've done and they've got a foundation that's, that's doing some really interesting stuff around this subject. How do we go about this test? Well, it's really simple. The only thing that you need is a stopwatch and probably a quiet place to do it. We begin by basically doing four breaths through our nose, nice and controlled. The only difference is on that last breath, that last inhale, we try and breathe in as much air as possible. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna breathe out through our nose as, for as slow and as long as possible. Okay, and as soon as we start breathing, we hit the stopwatch. If we feel the need to breathe or we swallow, we stop the test. If we finish the test and we're like, <gasps> we've done it, we've gone too far basically. And this gives you a time. Up on the corner here, you'll see I've written down the results and what that means. So basically anything under 20 seconds is really bad. And then go over 80 seconds is really, really good. And what we can do is that we can repeat this multiple times during the week to see where we're at. Now, what's really interesting for me is that as we get more stressed in our day-to-day -day life, that number decreases. So there's a clear correlation between stress and our CO2 tolerance levels. Now that we've got that number, we can go off and start to play around with adding it into our training. And there's really two methods of CO2 tolerance training. One is passive and one is active. Let's start with passive. The first exercise is called breath counting. So what you do is you take that number, you go over to the shift adapt, the links in the bio, and they've created this breath calculator, a great tool, and you can put in your result. For example, if I scored 35 seconds, I put 35 seconds in, and it would give me the cadence or speed or rate of breathing that I need to do to improve my performance. For example, it might be an eight, 10 breath. So I'm gonna breathe in eight seconds, and then I'm gonna breathe out for 10 seconds. And I might do that for two, three, four minutes, all the way up to five minutes to be able to improve that performance. Then as I get better at it, I can start to add in some breath holds. I can start to extend that out and play around with it. The next one to talk about is box breathing. Now, box breathing is everywhere. It's been on social media. There's, there's loads of videos around it. And quite simply, it is it's breathing in a box-shaped fashion. So we breathe in for a certain period of time, out for a certain period of time, in for that time period, and out for that time period. So for example, a four second box would be in for four seconds, hold for four seconds, out for four seconds, hold for four seconds. And we can do this for one, two, three minutes, or even further if we wanted to. And we could do this by increasing the box. So you could go five seconds, six seconds, eight seconds, building up that duration. What I really like about this drill is it's very simple, it's very clear, and we can do it during the course of the day. And this is one big point to add in, that we don't need to do these massive long breathing, hour long sessions to get the benefit of doing some simple breath work. What we can do is that we can drop it into parts of our day, in between meetings, before we go to bed, when we wake up in the morning, to help us improve our CO2 tolerance and therefore our state. Let's talk about active, and I'll talk about two exercises in this category. The first one is nose to nose, which basically means that you want to be breathing nose to nose during your activity. For example, we could take running. So we're looking at doing a controlled in and out breath through our nose for the whole time period, and that dictates our pace. If we start to breathe out through our mouth or in through our mouth, it means that we're going too fast and that intensity is too high. And we need to adjust the intensity to suit that ability to be able to breathe through our nose. Now, what might happen is that you have to significantly reduce your pace to keep that nose to nose cadence going. And that's okay. If we continue at it and keep doing the training, what will happen is that we'll be able to stay at the same heart rate and breath rate but our pace will increase. And that's hugely advantageous, especially if you're doing aerobic-based events. The second exercise is breath holds. 
And this is where we're going to hold our breath for a certain period of time whilst doing exercise. For example, we might hold our breath between 5 to 15 seconds as we're sprinting on a bike and then go through a series of different types of breathing paces and actions to control and calm down. For example, we might do a 975. So I'm going to do a 15 second sprint on an item or a machine or out in the hills, whatever it might be. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do nine breaths mouth to mouth, seven breaths nose to mouth, and five breaths nose to nose to help me recover as fast as possible. And I've used this in ice hockey with some of the guys I used to work with, and actually it makes a huge difference in our ability to recover and therefore our ability to produce power time and time again. Now there's a couple of notes to this. One, make sure that if you feel uncomfortable with holding your breath, you check yourself out for a doctor beforehand. And once you become experienced, that's probably maybe the only time to do some, some different types or maybe some overhead carries, etc., etc. Because what I don't want you to do is obviously pass out whilst you're doing this. So just try it. Again, don't do stupid stuff. Just slowly build up and progress. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video on CO2 tolerance training. We've got more coming up on this area. So please subscribe and like this video. Leave any comments below. I hope now that you can start to see how important it is to add it into your training and during the course of your day. It's gonna help you physiologically, it's gonna help you mentally. If you haven't already, please take our peak performance test to see the areas that you need to be improving to become or sustain your peak performance. Again, thanks very much for joining us. I hope your training is going well and I hope you're improving. Until next time, have a great week.